Hello everyone, I am Tassin and welcome to the Gems of War stream. So this Friday, of course, we got some invasions going on, uh, mech invasions, which is kind of interesting because it does come in with a mech weapon, which is kind of interesting <laughs> because next mythic next week is a mech and it probably will have pretty good synergy with it. As far as what it does, it explodes a bunch of brown and then grants a uh, random status effect to all mech uh, allies, then summons a uh, mech troop. This will be pretty good because the um, new mech that's coming out is also a man accumulator. However, it's a damage based man accumulator. So you can synergize this weapon with the uh, new mythic as well and uh, pretty much be good to go. And then just have like two other mechs on your team like T uh, Tina 9000 and one other thing and uh, should end up being pretty solid. Uh, they did end up nerfing the mythic that's going to be coming out next week. Um, it now has uh, 12 doom skull instead of 20 and a 25 mana cost instead of... Um, uh, 24, so one higher mana cost and uh, eight less uh, um, Doom Skull, but it will still be able to hit uh, pretty much 60 pretty consistently, uh, combined with the fact that it'll still pretty much board clear the entire board since it both has the Doom Skull creation and the explosion off the ability itself. So it definitely still has potential, nonetheless. So uh, definitely make sure to get this weapon. Highly advise making sure to get it before the end of this week. Um, not sure how many other purposes it'll really be used for uh, outside of that though, but it might be used in some Bombot teams. Uh, this has no mana conflict with Bombot, so potentially could be okay with that in a few other instances. But uh, uh, overall, it should still be solid. It's one of these kind of like uh, new kind of weapon archetypes that they're kind of adding into the game, where they're adding all these things that explode a bunch of a color that then um, mana generate or you know uh, assist a certain typing. In this case, Max. Uh, they've been adding quite a few of these. I think this is like our third, fourth one that we've gotten so far. And, um, yeah, I'll we'll probably just keep adding them. Anyways, let's go grab that. I'm probably just going to go for tier three. Not really much of a need to go beyond that unless you're going for a leaderboard. So we'll just get our uh, tier three and go do our battles. And let's go upgrade this drill. I'm actually not sure what the perks were. I read it a little while back. <laughs> but I didn't check it again last night, so we'll find out now. We did read it at one point, though. It's like extra armor for mechs and some other thing. I think it uh, even gets some of its mana back. Four mana, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it gains four mana back. Uh, one armor to all mechs. Uh, five damage to first enemy. And four additional armor. So technically five armor to itself, since you're generally going to be running this with mech hero class. Uh, the main one that's really noteworthy is that it gains four mana back. Meaning that after you cast it the first time, which you're only going to need seven mana for. Every subsequent cast, you're only going to need ten mana for. So it makes it a bit easier to get all the mana back for this uh, weapon. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the first of these types of weapons that actually has a four mana back as well. Uh, this is just definitively better than Jar of Eyes now in the current state of the game. In most instances, there's a couple instances where you might want like the really heavy skull spam or, you know, a skull oriented uh, troop. That's good for first slot if something else uh, dies prior, but or if you really need that blue storm. But um, this is pretty beneficial on a weapon like this since it will require so little mana in order to get it back up. Um, it, it using two mana and pretty much board clearing. Um, and only needing 10 to get all the way back up. It's going to be solid. Man, anyways, let's get this up. Because Jar of Eyes got nerfed to uh, 16 mana costs, the uh, most recent balance patch, up from uh, 14. I think it was mostly because of Blue Storm attached to it. it was the main thing that uh, ended up getting it nerfed. Anyways, uh, let's go and uh, build our team then. And know that Wisdom Orb is definitely not worth getting it. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I know it's only me, not <laughs> across everyone, because it's uh, different for the bottom area. I mean, it's the same for the bottom area, uh, different for the top. But uh, we did get our 100 gems today, at least. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that one's completely RNG. The top one there. But um, yeah, we need to do that a little bit later. I'm pretty sure we'll passively get it done between everything we're doing today, though. To a point where we, I probably won't need to go out of my way for it. And nothing at all for us, as per usual. <laughs> Though I need those tokens. We're uh, one token drop away from having the last one. And I'm not going to waste $10 just to go get it early. But um, yeah, as soon as we get one more token drop, we'll be able to have all the warbands for free. It might have taken like a month of RNG, actually a little bit over a month. But uh, we would have gotten all five of them for free. But uh, hopefully we'll get those war coins soon before they add more. I'm not even sure if they're going to add more. I'm not sure exactly sure what the whole ordeal is with uh, warbands. They never really explained that well. <laughs> <laughs> they were kind of just added and it's like, oh, here you go. But anyways, let's get into this event already. So, of course, got invasions. That's obviously mech restriction given everything that we have. Uh, we're actually already pretty far with the rewards. I'm pretty sure Isabel has already done like a billion and a half points. We'll go grab a orange. Let's see. Uh, yep, she has. <laughs> 568. That should be leaderboard. That is... Yep, that's top 20 on leaderboard. Nice. We're definitely not going for leaderboard, though. <laughs> we're taking the minimum. 
Uh, you definitely ideally at minimum minimum want to finish out to stage eight because uh, this event actually has some pretty good loot moving up to that point. I believe it's 65 gems and a random orb, which is uh, pretty solid. Anyways, uh, as far as our team, uh, quite a few things we can go. I am very tempted just to go bomb bot rush because we can. I was uh, joking about the weapon earlier. Well, not really joking, but um, let's go run the weapon. <laughs> the new wet mech weapon that just came out. Might as well. Uh, not that one. Oh, drill shooter is nice, though. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. It doesn't create brown, though. Do you create... Oh, no, you just explode. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, wait. This has summoning? Hold up. The strategy. I didn't even think of that, too. Yeah, you kind of do want to use a bomb bot when you use this weapon. Because the bomb bot dies, but then you create a mech in its place. Oh, that's interesting. Because um, there's actually several mechs that kill themselves. So this weapon's actually a little bit better than how good I already thought it was. Because there's actually five mythics that kill themselves. Let me go double check. Here's the full list. Actually, we could check it here. Um, but there are five mythics that uh, kill themselves out. Uh, they include Bombot, which is 100% and the most consistent one. Uh, and then the four... T or, oh, sorry. Uh, there's four of them. I forgot because that one doesn't actually do it. But uh, there's four of them. Uh, Bombot does it 100% of the time. And then there's also um, three of them that do it 15% of the time. The Destructobot, the, um, the Dectobot, and the something else from that kingdom that wasn't a legend. And the uh, Smashobot. All three of these, or, uh, or sorry, all four of these. Well, the three of them from uh, Tinkertown have 15% chance that they die every time they cast. And Bombot has 100% chance that it dies whenever it casts. Which is actually not a bad thing because this mech weapon resummons a mech into that location. So that's a pretty interesting interaction. That weapon has a lot of potential. I feel like it's mostly going to be used for next mythic, but it still has a lot of potential nonetheless. Okay, uh, let's see if we can get plus two brown, plus one blue. That seems fine. And then we'll change our class, obviously, to mech. Uh, as you would generally do whenever you're using a mech team. There are very few situations where you would run a mech team without running mech class. Uh, let's see. Oh, extra armor. Uh, you know what? It's actually better to go armor here if we're using bomb bots, because that's one whole additional damage for them. And uh, that's better than no additional damage. Uh, if you're using a shield... What does this thing count as, by the way? I didn't even check. I assume it's like an artifact or something. It's a da It's a dagger? That's a dagger? <laughs> How on earth is that a dagger? Well, it doesn't have dagger though. You would think it would make it one of the things that mech actually has, given that it's a mech weapon. Mech has tome, uh, missile, and shield, and that is none of those three. Uh, barrier on brown. Uh, d -d 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 three extra magic at start. Theoretically, the armor tier would be better. When an ally dies, barrier another ally. Could actually be good. However, this is one extra damage. Banish just to get rid of submerge. And alternatively, you can go enchant and get super mana. Because this thing actually requires green as well. You know what? I don't think we have any submerge in this game mode. We might as well go to enchant. It saves time. And then mech allies gain two armor per turn, which for bomb bots is basically one damage per turn. Okay, I think we're good to go. I'm not sure for how far bomb bots will get us, but uh, there we go. Oh, wait, one last thing. Uh, and switch to armor. Actually, is it better to go magic? Don't they net gain the same damage regardless? So you might as well go magic. Let me double check. But based on their boost ratio, I'm pretty sure magic is actually better because they gain the same overall damage from magic or armor, but they can't lose their magic. Well, not as easily anyways. Because they have a 2 to 1. So if you give them 24 armor, that's 12 damage. And if you give them 12 magic, that is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. It does it based on half its magic. Armor is still better. Hold up. Hold up. I forgot. It doesn't have 1 to 1 based on its uh, magic. Otherwise, its uh, damage would be exceedingly high. I don't think we need these anymore. I'm pretty sure we already finished out this event. So let me go switch all to armor. Armor, armor, armor. Alright, we should be good to go. Should be good to go. Alright, let's get into this event. That'd be funny if this actually goes all the way. I think it might be able to. <laughs> Not like for like the super far towers, but uh, it'll be able to get some distance. It's a lot of damage. Also, I didn't say hello to everyone yet. Let me go make chat bigger. Also, that one uh, Dragon game just released their beta an hour ago. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play it because I don't have access to an account that has it. <laughs> if anyone got access to the beta of the uh, Century uh, Age of Ashes... And don't mind sharing your account. Let me know. Because <laughs> we can't play the beta this weekend otherwise. Which is likely going to be the case. Because I highly doubt anyone would. Uh, let's see. We'll throw that down. And I'll kill it with the bomb bot. 
Because only 10,000 people got access. And obviously way more than that actually signed up. Oh, do I need more copies of that pet? I know I did in the past. I think I have it max now, though. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so I don't need to bother with that. Uh, invasions. You just summoned your first Tina off the weapon? Nice. Yeah, it can summon the Mythics, too. It can summon any rarity. Every single rarity of mech. Everything from Common Bomba all the way up to Tina. <laughs> You're very excited about the weapon. It's a good weapon. We don't get good weapons too often. Like, it's a really good weapon. Even though we're barely even touching it yet because Bomb Watch is insta killing everything. Well, we're messing with it a bit. Oh, so I think we say hello. Uh, hello, Matt. Hello, Isabel. Hello, Stardust. I keep getting distracted. Hello, Bacon. Hello, Juan. Hello, Tyrion. Hello, Isabel. Hello, Gustavo. Hello. Uh, uh, see you, Stardust. Hope you have a good day. You're grabbing lunch. Uh, hello, Analyst. Hello, Matt. Hello, DS. Hello, HD Addict. Hello, everyone else. Welcome, 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 welcome. Okay, so let's go grab some brown. Let's go auto win. Success. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's take that over. Get a bomb bot down. Uh, what does the new weapon do, including perks? It's pretty good. This new weapon gives, um, well, its main premise is that it explodes all brown, which a lot of weapons seem to do currently. <laughs> However, uh, it does it for 14 mana costs. And given that Jar of Eyes kind of got nerfed uh, recently, it's basically a new Jar of Eyes, kind of, indirectly, in a sense. It doesn't have Blue Storm, though. Um, but it kind of acts like Jar of Eyes, except it summons a mech troop, a random mech troop. This is pretty beneficial with things like Bomba and a few of the other uh, mechs because they actually kill themselves out. And um, you can actually resummon over top of them. Uh, mechs prior didn't really have a proper resummoning method. Um, so this is pretty much covers that gap for, that they have in a really good way since you could do it off a hero. Since obviously you would do it in mech hero class that has half mana start. As far as its perks, the most notable one is the very last one. It actually gains four of its mana back. So uh, with half mana start, you only need seven mana initially. Then every cast after that, you only need uh, ten mana for making it very easy to get full mana on it constantly. Since um, it has such a low requirement for it. As you can see, we pretty much already have it all the way back up, even though we just cast it. There we go. I wonder if this actually does go all the way. We would eventually hit a point where we have to go use the thing that hits uh, higher onto towers. But um, for now, it seems to be doing what it needs to do. <laughs> Haven't even really needed the resummon aspect of it. In which case, we could actually get some pretty juicy stuff. Mechs in general are a bit underwhelming as a typing, but there are some very strong mechs within the typing. And also, it gets even stronger once the next Mythic comes out this Friday. Because that's another thing that it could potentially create that would be strong. Even though the Mythic got nerfed, it's still decent compared to the average mech. Relative to them. Plus, I believe it has no mana conflict with it. I think it might have blue overlap. But it only has like one color overlap with the Mythic. So it's not blocking it that much. If barely at all. Because look, it's already back at full mana. Though it'd still be blocking some of that mana though. I said, hello Elite Gaming! Welcome. If you screw up, you posted it. You pulled a Tina off of a 30 shop purchase for the event. Nice. Yeah, it's possible. Whenever you uh, buy stuff for um, any event um, that has like a full random drop table, anything that you use during the event, you can end up getting from it. Uh, this includes things like the uh, weekly world lore event, invasions, raids. Uh, anything that's usable within the event is theoretically possible to get as a drop. It's very unlikely, and you generally don't want to use your resources for that sole purpose. However, there is a small chance you just randomly get um, get a good troop for it. But yeah, other than the four Tinkertown troops, every single thing you see on this page, excluding the four Tinkertown troops, are within the drop table. So, um, yeah, there's a chance to get it. If I'm not mistaken, um, even Nutcracker is available. I'm not 100% certain on that. But I'm pretty sure Nutcracker is available through this, if you get lucky. Because it's already been in the key drop table, so it should be in this drop table as well. Actually, I believe we got a copy of it too, didn't we? Because I'm pretty sure we only had one copy of it earlier, and now we have two. So, uh, unless we got it from something else, like Gem Keys earlier. But, um, yeah, it, it should be in the drop table. 
It should be. Of course, the main thing in a drop table is Tina 9000, though the chance of getting it is exceedingly rare. But it is definitely the strongest thing there, even though we're not currently using it. It is the strongest option there. We just happen to be running bomb bots because it's quick. I remember when bomb bots were meta. That was actually a pretty fun meta. It was really risky, but it was pretty funny because how quick it would win. They're not meta anymore, though, for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of stuff that hard counters them since then. Submerge, um, Lust, which has that charm thing whenever something dies. Uh, anything in general that has a trigger based on uh, death, but particularly uh, Lust ends up countering it. Um, there's also the fact that it's just a lot easier to take damage, and it's also um, the amount of damage that you do for FOIA OE relative to the total stats within the game is a bit lower now compared to before. Even though the amount of damage it does is higher, the amount of damage relative to the overall durability within the game is lower. Which has made it less viable. Oh, he is? Okay, yeah. I, I assumed he was. Just didn't know 100%. But yep, he is. You just got one. And I'm pretty sure I got one, too. Because I'm pretty sure I only had one copper copy prior. So I'm pretty sure we got it from when we were opening 3,100 gem keys earlier. <laughs> For the previous mythic. I really hope next week's mythic doesn't take the S that long. Also, we have a problem. Please extra turn. Okay, good. We got lucky. <laughs> I was lucky. Kind of funny seeing a Val Raven in this game mode instead of a Val Raven Tower. That's actually very rare. Because generally you see a Val Raven Tower instead. But nope, normal Val Ravens do still appear. <laughs> occasionally. Normally it's Val Raven Tower, but you still get a normal Val Raven. Because it chooses a random spot on the team, and if it chooses a tower, it becomes a Val Raven tower. But if it chooses the empty spot, it just becomes a normal Val Raven. Making it actually pretty rare in the current state of the game to see a normal Val Raven in this game mode. That's still possible. And it's actually preferred compared to uh, it being on a tower, because the towers are normally a little bit slower to kill. Unless you're using the invasion troop, which normally you would be using. But for now, this is perfectly fine. Until, the, uh, until three bot bomb bots no longer kills, this is perfectly fine to run the entire time. Actually, we might even use literally all of our sigils today without even switching off a bomb bot, which would be pretty funny. I'd be perfectly fine with that. What a diverse team of just bomb bots. <laughs> Theoretically, you could even go four bomb bots. Because you start with barrier. So that would be enough tank ability to actually uh, literally just run four. You wouldn't have half mana start, though, so. But it would be pretty funny. We just have to hope our resummons are good. Well, 20% start, you'd still start with 4 instead of uh, 7. It's not too huge a difference. Since the enchant auto gives you the 2 immediately. Uh, any idea when the next update is? Generally, it's in January, which is, well, this month. Obviously, at this point, that's not happening. So, early to mid-February is likely patch. No official date. But very soon. But no official date has been given. If I had to guess, it's probably two Tuesdays from now. Not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. There is a small chance it's next Tuesday, though. But uh, two Tuesdays from now seem very likely. Isn't that a Guild War week, though? Oh, gosh. Why must they always choose Guild War weeks lately? The most recent big patch was on that. Though this is a mini patch. Because I remember, because they added War Coins during a Guild War week, which was the worst idea they could have ever done. Like, a lot less complaining about pay-to-win would have occurred if they didn't do it on a Guild War week. Like, if they did it the week after a Guild War week. Like, people would have still mentioned it, <laughs> at least initially. But it wouldn't have been nearly as bad as if it, when it released during a Guild War week. Because in about a month, we pretty much got all of them for free. No, it is luck-based if you do or don't, though. We've really gotten pretty lucky on it so far. Still haven't seen it on Adventure Board yet. Um, they mentioned when it was first coming out that it would be. However, I'm not sure if that has changed yet. Not sure we even have confirmation if it has or hasn't. But they did mention initially that they can happen on, um, that they can happen on an adventure board as an epic or legendary task, which are rarer ones, of course. Uh, how do you get warband points? Um, currently, the only 100% confirmed way of getting it are, well, two of them. Uh, one of the, one realistically in endgame is, um, you get them from... Uh, you get them from the offers every single day. 
So uh, potentially one of your offers can end up being a uh, war coin one. There's 30 war coins for 100 gems, uh, which you uh, can have on any of your first two tasks uh, or first two offers. And then the third one on the VIP one, if you have it unlocked, there is uh, 200 gems for 65, I think it is. Um, those are the two that end up appearing there. Uh, there should also be an epic and legendary task on Adventure Board, which we have yet to see a single time. Uh, I'm not sure if that's still the case, but that was mentioned when they were going over the patch uh, back then. Not sure if it's still in the game, since we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Could just be that we got unlucky so far. But there's a good chance we will eventually see it on um, Adventure Board. And uh, the other way to get them, though it's not accessible to uh, veteran players, is um, and whenever you complete out a kingdom, you actually get 15 war coins. So newer players um, can actually very easily get all the war coins you would ever need. Because uh, there's 34 kingdoms, each one gives 15. So that comes out to, uh, what, like almost 500 war coins for free for newer players. Just from completing the quest lines. Which is pretty good incentive, even on top of all the other incentives to go, go, go do the quest lines. I can't believe it. We actually soloed this entire event, or at least up to our sigil amount. We just bomb bot. <laughs> actually, we still have two more. Also, am I up against four crossbow towers? Oh, no. I thought it was for a second because I saw green there. They had the same shape, different color. Actually, I never even realized they were a recolor of each other. Oh, never mind. There's only two in the other ones. Oh, wait, never mind. It is different. I, why do I think they were all? It's because they all, like, share a color. <laughs> I actually never even realized they were all recolors of each other. I'm not sure how I just noticed that now. <laughs> that all the towers are just recolors of each other. I've never really paid much attention to it. Obviously, some of them have special designs, like the holiday ones, Bowery Raven Tower, and a few others. But uh, the basic six are just recolors of each other. <laughs> kind of like how the Zugoths are recolor of each other for the event. The six different Zugoths, the six different towers. I guess that makes sense. I noticed it for Zugoth, but I somehow have never noticed it for towers. Which is kind of funny because this has been out for like two years now. <laughs> and I've just now noticed. Are the Warband uh, banners exclusive? Yes. The only way that you can get the Warband uh, banners, as well as the uh, extra slot from the Warbands, is from um, getting the Warband. So technically the only actual exclusive thing is the uh, banner itself. But yeah, that's why people said pay to win the first, uh, which is true. The first, um, the first Guild War when it launched. Because it basically was pay to win <laughs> during the time. Obviously, it probably didn't really make too huge a difference having those banners or not. But it was still a feature that helped gameplay that uh, was money locked. But uh, anyways, that's all for sigils. That was easy. <laughs> just run bomb bots. Easy as that. Literally just run three bomb bots and you're good to go with the new weapon. That's three commons. Pretty much everyone has that laying around. You do need mech fully traded though. Well, you don't have to have it fully traded, but you know, it helps half mana start. But um, yeah, that's literally all you have to do for the event. And I'm pretty sure you can go uh, quite a bit further. We haven't even casted like the fourth bomb bot. Plus we have the resummon off the weapon, which we didn't even need to utilize. Speaking of that, hello PvP. I want to go use what we just did and see how bad it does in uh, PvP. Uh, probably not against this team though. How about this one? Okay, so uh, let's rename this to um, Max. Bombot. 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 I want to try the new weapon since we didn't really get to do it to its full extent. Uh, mech class. And the really good weapon that came out today, which I completely forget what it's called, so I'll just type in mech and it'll bring it up. I really wish Drill Shooter created brown. And it would change our banner accordingly, which should be a brown blue. And we should be good to go. Alright, let's see what this could do. Of course, now we don't have enchant, so a little bit slower mana for the mechs. However, it's still going to be relatively quick. And then we get a resummon. Oh, and apparently, so does he. <laughs> We're not the only one with resummon. Interesting. 
I like it. It's really luck based, obviously, as far as what you get from summon. But it has a lot of potential. Or Bombot's meta again? <laughs> I highly doubt it. Can we bring Bombot back from the grave? From a single weapon. I like how a single weapon or a single troop can completely bring something back. Or make something viable that never was. Uh, we need a skull. There we go. Because this fixes the, uh, Bombots make your team small issue. Because that was one issue Bombots have had in the past as well. Is that, uh, as the Bombots die, things that concentrate their damage, like split damage, will do more damage to you. Making it easier to die. Especially given that your hero was normally pretty far up in the team. Or something similar that would take damage over the time. But, um, yeah, now you have a replacement for it. While you also man accumulate at this exact same time. Looks like bomb bots are meta. <laughs> Not like super meta compared to some of the meta these days. But, uh, they are viable again. At least to some capacity. In theory, they were never not viable. But this is definitely a great step forward for them. They're still going to lose, though. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, we only have two explosions. I kind of want to go for the expl uh, the skull here. We know he's going to get follow-up on us. Oh, yeah, we actually got Karnex. That's a pretty good mech. Apparently, we're going to have to really utilize it because everything else is dead. Oh yeah, Karnex got buffed too recently in the most recent balance patch. It now creates um, five skulls on top of its explosion. Oh no, it got resummoned, and I can only hit first slot. Oh no! Wait, you don't have an armor gain? Oh yeah, you do. Oh, I was gonna say you should have an armor gain, and he does, or she does actually. Uh, let's see. At least based on lore. Alright, this battle's literally impossible now. We've been gated off. It lived with 8 HP and got the resummon on us. Hello, Raj! Welcome, and hello, Fora. Welcome, welcome. I know, life and death. At least I hit HP and not armor. Still problematic, though. Hope we get lucky. Don't die on us. Don't die on us. Okay, we got the new uh, robot. We got that good mana generator. The only problem is uh, no mech has Brownstorm, do they? I don't think any mech currently within the game has Brownstorm. Which would be very beneficial for this team. Because there's no way of getting Brownstorm. I almost feel like using Bomba on first slot would work, but it doesn't have barrier <laughs> in a normal battle. It'd be way too risky for it dying. But yeah, it's not like super, super meta. But I'm pretty sure bomb bots are back. If nothing else, it's a good quick kill team now. Because now you have the consistency of having a backup plan. Which you didn't really have prior. I wish you would actually summon those destructing mechs though. Ideally, that's what you always want to be getting as a summon, so you have no control over it, of course. 
And the problem is when you don't get any damage source mech below, like we have right now. <laughs> Which is why this battle's taking forever. Though also because we're up against life and death. We would have been dead ages ago if it wasn't life and death. Jar of Eyes. Let's see which one's better. <laughs> Jar of Eyes or Bumba? Obviously the other team is better. Let's see if we can actually kill it though. I gotta go for it. There's not that many browns, but hopefully this works out. Nice. Let's take some brown in her and hope for brown off the sky. Do this and then go immediately into a resummon. I gotta block in my brown, unfortunately. It's a good idea to get their mana up first. I was doing that initially, but I didn't this time around, but I don't think it mattered. Wow, it actually killed um, a Zugoff team. Though I got a little bit lucky on it, missing both its converts. I'm not really lucky. I was trying to deliberately take moves that would uh, stop it. But, um, all things considered, didn't do too bad there. Yeah, you can do a Destructobot loop as well now. If you're up against a team that has a lot of Empowers, you could infinitely Destructobot loop into something that uses red for auto extra turn. Wait, what's a good red extra turn troop? What's a... That's a good idea, actually. Hold up. That's a pretty good idea. What is a red... It would need to be up against a team with empowers, though. Like, two empowers or more. Because it's a good anti-empower team. Um, let me go... Actually, I'll still keep this set up. Let me go try another. Um, She needs 13 plus red on the board, though. So it's not a guaranteed chance she extra turns. I was thinking one of the goblins. Oh no, let me just type an extra turn for red and see what we have. We have goblin rocket. Hobgoblin. This isn't consistent damage, but it is consistent extra turn. We have the anti-boss troop. We have uh, the toad squeezer guy who isn't horrible. War on the extra turns if it kills. And Queen of Tanya only extra turns if there's 13 plus red. Which generally, if you're generating that much, there will be. However, it's not a guarantee that it will. However, that is a pretty solid damage source. So, you know, it will go the Queen of Tanya method. Queen of Tanya, Bomba, and um, Sentry. You can do it that way. Has a lot of potential. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for... And they have no mana conflict with each other, too, which is cool. Uh, I'm looking for... Well, actually, Sentry does. Or what, what's its mana again? I can't remember. Is it called Sentry? I can't remember its name. It's, um... Where's Tinkertown? Tinkertown! Oh, no! And it's full mana conflict with... I thought it used yellow-red or something. Aww. It does have full conflict with Queen Natanya. Uh, put this right over here. Okay, and then we we'll change up everything else. And then we change our class to mech. And change our banner to plus two red, plus one something. Probably a blue. Because blues used more on mechs than uh, green is. So some of the better mechs do use green. There's not that many mechs that use green, but then they started adding a bunch of mechs that use green. Oh, I don't want to minus brown, though. That's a really important color to have. How about, uh, how about red green? We definitely have to have plus two red. Oh, hold up. Oh, but minus is purple, though. But we could plus two plus two. I'd rather not minus purple, though. But why not? Sure. <laughs> it has a whole extra plus. It's fine. I think it's fine if we don't have it. Okay, so plus two green, plus two red. Let's see what this can do. So 
So this thing's rather interesting. It gives all other allies a quarter of their mana. And it creates uh, 7 red for each enemy that has full mana. Uh, this is really good if you're up against double and power. Because you'd be able to create 14 red consistently. Unfortunately, not as good against a single one. <laughs> but it's a good uh, double uh, and power counter. Especially if you can get full mana turn one. Unfortunately, it's just going to kind of sit there. Otherwise. Oh, gosh. Wait, booster issue still counts. So even with booster issue, that's not enough to kill. Hmm. web <laughs> is very webby oh yeah i forgot it was entangled so it only did the one thing i was like wait why did it only explode one there was more on the board than that but yeah that's just nothing it literally just killed itself out and did nothing in return the only problem with that bot is it's very cons inconsistent I almost feel like the Smasho one could almost work out better. The Smasho bot. Explodes all reds. Then deals a bunch of damage. Boosted by uh, armor. And there's and then there's a chance to self-destruct. Hey, let's diversify our team of destruction. <laughs> Actually, I think we just go another bomb bot and we just go to Smasho bot. To have like something a little bit more consistent of not dying. And then we can go for like a Tina. For like the cleanup. You know what would be really good in this team? The new Mythic. <laughs> what color is the new Mythic again? I believe it uses yellow, brown, blue, right? Let me double check. You know what this team really needs? <laughs> the Mythic next week. Uh, let's see. But yeah, it comes in with um, blue, yellow, brown. The yellow, brown part being very good. The only problem with that is if you put it in front of Bombot, you're blocking Bombot for 13 mana on brown. That's the only issue with it. And even Tina's doing the same thing. Yeah, I feel like we need a storm for this team. Because if we don't have a natural storm... I almost want Blue Storm, but Skadey's pretty bad. Red Storm I can't do because we can't use Mech Class with Red Storm. What is Brown Storm, infinitely? What is Stone Storm even called? Is it not called Stone Storm? What's it called? It's called, um... Death Storm. Oh, is Dust Storm yellow? No, I'm pretty sure Dust Storm is brown. Um, oh! Harpy. We could do Harpy. That would be the mythic generally when it's not this event. Actually, I wonder what it would be like. Hold up. Instead of Bombot, though that would reduce your damage by so much. Instead of Bombot, you could go um you could go the new mythic instead of Bombot. Because then you'd have a four times exploder. Every single thing on your team would explode if you went the new mythic instead of Bombot with this composition. But well, technically this explodes too. <laughs> Only once. Yeah, we're frozen on blue, so I'm just going to have to go for this as much as I want to take that mana. Is he still going to leave it there? Oh no, he took it off the extra turn. Oh no, the, he destroyed us before we could do anything. Rope dart, stop being the most powerful weapon in the entire game. 
I'm really surprised they didn't rebalance Rope Dart at all when they did the balance patch. After the life and death nerf, I'm pretty sure definitively Rope Dart is your strongest weapon in the game. Not for every team, but just generally speaking. It is very strong. Ow, oh, that's a lot of skull. Well, there goes our resummon option. And dead. <laughs> I still like the bomb bot spam. Hey, doing Child of Summer with it would be kind of interesting. I can give it a shot. This team definitely needs more bomb bot. It needs more explosions. Oh, yeah, I, I I'm not running Dispel at the moment, am I? Normally you would be, so that doesn't happen. <laughs> but I changed it earlier for what we were doing. Because we didn't need it for invasions, obviously. Oh yeah, Goblin Rocket. I almost forgot. That counts as a mech, doesn't it? It's a goblin, but it's also a mech. I almost forgot that even counts as a mech. Interesting. I like this premise for the new mythic. As a team like this. Something along those lines. But let's go try the uh, damage option. Uh, let's see. So let's go... Let's try Queen Natani again. We'll do it to a summer. Destructo bot then gets to go crazy. And a new weapon, which is basically a jar of eyes, but more mech oriented. Wait, why am I under banner? Though while I'm here, um, what banner would we need? Let's pick the weapon first. Oh, what are we missing? We're missing brown, of all things, which is kind of weird given that we're going to be using mech class. However, it shouldn't matter too much because we're probably going to be summoning browns once Destructobot goes down. And obviously we need a heavy red banner. You know what? We might as well go uh, that. Oh, so there's something funny. You know what banner would be really good right now? That one. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the only banner I'm missing. Give me. Stop paying wall into my banner. <laughs> We'll have it in about a week or two. But until then, <laughs> it's the only banner we do not have. I was looking at that banner and it's like, there's almost no instance you would ever need that banner compared to this banner. And then this team is like, oh, yeah, you need that banner. <laughs> Literally the only banner in the entire game we don't have. Oh no, it died already. That was quick. Oh, did I put the wrong one there? I think I did. That's not the explodey one. I want the explodey one. Uh, let's see. Uh, where's the smash bot? I'll try it this way. All right, there we go. Oh, 
But yeah, doing it with a detector one, if you can get a first turn convert, it would be a great counter to double empower teams. The problem is having starting board alignment. Like this board, we didn't have it on. Also, we already lost. I, mean, I think we already lost. Hero sure seems dead. I know it died. What are you doing? Also, should I finally go and bite the bullet and finally get Queen Titania maxed? I feel like the answer is yes. I think this is the stream we finally get Queen Titania maxed. We've been able to for a while, I just haven't. But I think this is a stream we finally get Queen Titania maxed. I think she deserves it. I was mentioning she won the top five as well to get maxed. We just did a few others first. Like Web Spinner and a couple other things. Yagwe. But uh, I think it is finally time to go and get her maxed. Like, max max. As in the gold elite level for her. Which is six extra damage for her. Which is theoretically nine extra damage for her. Which is one of the highest damage increases. Actually, I think it's literally the highest damage increase of any legend in the game. As far as how much extra cast damage it gets. Because in theory, it gets... Um, it gets potentially up to 36 additional damage. Assuming the entire opposing team is fairy fired. Also, we should probably not play this battle out. It's going to take forever. <laughs> With what we have left on our team right now. Now it'll really take forever. I refuse to die to this spider, though. Though it looks like we might. It's sure trying to win, that's for sure. It's actually going to win. I was going to say, how on earth did that not give us any skull? Alright, there's a chance we lose here. Uh, I'm not liking this. No, that's why! I knew it! I knew it! Alright, let's go get Queen Titania maxed. I think it's finally time. We have the resources for it. We even mentioned it yesterday. As of yesterday, we have enough to upgrade two legends. Plus, still have enough remaining to go and upgrade a mythic. Because we'll need three Anus for the first level of a mythic. Because it saves us of having to go Initia. Oh, also, I didn't claim this earlier. But here's the 65 gems in the orb. I was mentioning earlier. 65 gems and there's the orb. And the other stuff was from I have no clue what. Ah, <laughs> oh, another orange. Stop giving us oranges. It's two oranges in a row. But anyways, uh, let me go finally upgrade Queen Titani. It's time. It is time. Alright, so uh, there's two different ways we could do this. We could do three epics into the Anu thingy. Or we could just go all in Anu. But honestly, I, I think we actually should do the epics first. Because there's not too many epics we really want to go level up at this point. So you know what? I'm going to do three epics, which is the same as using one Anu. Because it saves us an Anu for later. So we'll do three epics. That gets her one magic. Two Anus. That gets her two magic. And guess what? Three Anus gets her three magic. <laughs> Here's the full breakdown. So in total, of course, that's... Um, that's um, six magic. Uh, anything else we need to change? Yeah, that's fine. Making sure I'm doing it right. Not too often we upgrade our legends. Yep, that's what you would need to use for it. Gosh, that's expensive. But, it's worth it. Look at all that magic. And now she has a nice cool little gold thingy. You know what? We can make a pure gold team now almost. Where's my Yagwe Queen Titania team? Do I still have it set to undefend? No, I do not. Hold up. We need to go use Yagwe Queen Titania team now that we have the whole team pretty much maxed. Let's go use the meta. Uh, unfortunately, Hero's not maxed, so we can't have that aspect. But, um... Let's go do it. So we need a Yagwe. We need a Flamer Fur. 
The Rupdar also could work. Oh yeah, duh. We're not underneath weapons. Also, Flame of Fur available uh, next Monday? Is it next Monday or two weeks from now Monday? It's very soon. Actually, it might be next week's Monday. Like, next week's week's Monday. <laughs> not next Monday, but the following Monday, I think. Which writ offer do you buy? Um, I'm still hesitant on the writ offers, but I have been getting them lately. Just because um, they're theoretically worth it for an Imperial. It costs like about a thousand or so gems to get Imperial that way. Sometimes a little bit more, depending on the percent off. But um, it's kind of still worth it, just because of how useful Imperials are in the current state of the game. And how many we need. Also, where on earth is Flame Refer? And why can I not find it? There it is. And then we need Summer. There we go. Okay, uh, and then we need to go... What banner does this normally run? I haven't used it so long, I actually forget. Uh, it's... Actually... We could go with the plus two, plus two. Yeah, I don't think we need to change anything else. Looking good. Okay, so now the whole team is maxed, not counting Hero because it can't be maxed. But we got a Yagwe maxed, a Child of Summer maxed, and a Summer maxed. Pure gold team, not counting Hero, because Hero can't get gold. It's the first time I'm running with a pure gold team. Well, technically, kind of. Yeah, February 8th. Yeah, it is two uh, Mondays from now. That's what I thought. Just making sure. Thank you. Yeah, two Mondays from now you can get Flamer for the weapon we're currently using. And then it won't be available for, like, forever again. <laughs> for, like, six or seven months. So make sure to get it. If you don't already have it. Ah, uh, Cascade ruined our alignment. That would have potentially have been there. But yeah, Pan's not too bad. It's very situational when you can actually get value off a of Pan. But um, it has some potential. Hey, what hero class am I using? I'm using Titan. That's very much not the correct hero class. You should be using... I was like, wait, where's my Perpetual Red Star? <laughs> You can theoretically get off of that. There's actually a couple different hero classes you could run. However, Mecha is not actually one of them. Or, sorry, not Mech. I mean, um, um, Titan is actually not one of them you normally want to run for this team. You normally want to pressure triple damage burning. Yeah, it's a good change our hero class. Titan is not the one. There's actually several options for this team depending on how you want to play it, including Frost Mage. It really just depends. You can also feed purple to Queen, which is also uh, pretty tempting given the minus, because that equalizes out the minus. Oh, well, I'm actually going to try that. Because that still gives her plus two. So now we have plus two purple, plus two red, plus two um, green. So basically every important color on our team now has plus two. Archmage is not much of a first slot, though. As that gets our red storm going, there's one really big issue. We do not have full mana. However, the chance of us having an insane alignment next turn is going to be great. As long as it doesn't go crazy. There we go. But yeah, the upfront damage on the Yagoi is pretty absurd. His double cast kills almost everything in the game related to similar stats. There are a few that live, but uh, generally speaking, almost everything dies to Yagoi double casts. 
Now that's what the team's supposed to do. But yeah, it feels good finally having Max Queen to Tanya, even though I don't think that battle used a single Queen to Tanya. <laughs> but she is one of the stronger legends in the game. That actually gets a benefit from being maxed. Tesla is as well, but Tesla literally gains nothing from being gold medaled. Which is to a degree somewhat a good thing, in the sense that it doesn't you don't really feel obligated to get her maxed, because it's literally pointless to get her maxed. Unlike some of these other ones where you'd kind of want to go out of your way to potentially get them maxed. Because they gain such a good benefit from being so. Not like in this board. Gosh, one red short. I almost feel like flame referring here and just hope we get lucky. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We have alignment. Let's do that. Queen of Tanya. Ideally, Yagwe, but we don't have it, so we'll go for flame. Once again, no Yagwe, but I believe it's kill. Yep, dead. Yeah, there we go. Our first ever uh, fully gold team. Not counting here because it can't be golded currently. But there we go. Yagwe, Summer, and Queen. Now I kind of want to upgrade a bunch of other stuff since we already started the stream. I kind of want to go on an upgrading spree. I think we will. Let's go on an upgrading spree. We're going to do that this stream. Let's do it right now. Might as well. We already finished out the other thingy. So let's start from common and work our way up. So, commons that aren't useless. That we might want to max that get summoned off of something. Hmm. Big issue is we don't know what next update is, but it's a small update, so it shouldn't fundamentally change much. You know what I should go for first? Every mech. Because if we're going to be messing around with this weapon, we probably want to upgrade the mechs. So every common mech, we should probably upgrade. Including Mech Gnome, because I'm pretty sure it can even do Mech Gnome. Oh, wait, we can't do Mech Gnome because it's not Mythic. Aha, that's funny. But yeah, let's start upgrading every Mech. Because all these could be summoned off of... Um, off of the new weapon. And if we're going to be messing with this weapon, we might as well get the Mech stronger. And if they're useless Mechs, they still start with all these bonus stats every time. When are we going to do the pet naming stream? I have no clue. Most likely before Puzzle Quest 3 comes out, that's for sure. <laughs> I still wish they would leak more info on it. Also, this is one of those mechs that really needs rebalance. It's okay in Arena, but in every other instance it is horrifically bad compared to every other split damager in the game. Because it's a split damager that has literally no follow-up. It's basically the most basic form of that you could ever have of a split damage option. But if anyone else has any other questions, let me know. Make sure to go over them all. Also, I'll add out a code as soon as we finish all this upgrading, by the way. Then we'll probably grind a bit. But yeah, I think we go all the way up to Ultra Rare. I'm not sure we upgrade the epics. Where's the epic line even start? Right there, at the TED. Also, that's what you would normally use for the invasion event, by the way, but we kind of tore through it with bomb bots. But the TED thousand, uh, 1000 could be used for it. Oh, this guy doesn't actually create mechs. Or, well, he creates mechs, but he doesn't count as a mech, so we don't need to upgrade him. Uh, we could do a tier list for all factions. I, uh, the tier list I really want to get done next, which I should probably go do soon, is a hero class tier uh, list. Now that more got announced to eventually come, I should probably do one for all that currently exists. And then update as we start getting more. Because they confirmed the other night that... Um, actually, this Wednesday, two days ago, that they do plan on adding more kingdoms. When that is, who knows, but um, it is confirmed they do plan on adding more kingdoms to the game. 
What rarity is this? Ultra rare? No, it's still rare. That thing's a rare? Interesting. But no worries, we'll announce way ahead of time when the pet stream is. But probably not in the next month or two. Because next month, um, or sometime, we don't know exactly when. But um, I know when it initially comes out. Um, when that dragon game that has the beta today that I didn't get access to. When that game officially comes out. Or if we get access to the next beta. We are going to be playing that game so ridiculously much. And uh, the other one is Pokemon Unite. Uh, no official date has been given for Pokemon Unite. But uh, whenever that comes out, I'm going to be doing it a super ridiculously high amount. Um, there's rumor it's coming uh, on Pokemon Day as an announcement on the day. But um, it's either launching that day or it's getting an official date announced on that day, most likely. Also, we're probably finishing Slate Aspire in the next week. Actually, I might even finish it this Sunday. Might as well. It might not be literally the last stream we ever do for it, but realistically, it likely will be. <laughs> it's actually going to be our 100% completion uh, stream. Because at that point, we'll have every achievement for the game. As well as basically having completed out the entire game. Theoretically, you could also Ascension 20 every character. However, that would be rather tedious to do. <laughs> when is Pokemon Day? February something. I actually forget the exact date. It's February something. Let me go double check. Um, I should probably know that. <laughs> also, Slate Aspire comes out on Android, um, February 3rd, by the way. Which is in a couple days. I think that's Wednesday of next week. Um, because I know quite a few of you like playing on phones only, or mostly. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for, uh, Pokemon Day. Oh, that's super late. It's February 27th. But that's even more likely that the game comes out that day then. Yeah, that's like the end of February. That's like the last day of February. Well, second to last day. That's super late in February. Uh, you're ultra rare, right? You should be. The other one was rare. Okay, just making sure. I don't want to accidentally use the wrong tokens. Don't need to accidentally use the wrong ones. Okay, do we do three or an epic? The epics are so precious. Well, not really. Yeah, let's go an epic. As long as you use the same equivalency, it doesn't matter too much. Because you can always do three for the first level of the other ones. Alright, so this is ultra, 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 ultra. Okay, so these go ultra is all the way up to the blast cannon then. So we have all these mechs upgraded, so uh, for next week, as well as for this week, if we mess around with it anymore, whenever we summon a mech, they'll all be upgraded, except for the legends and mythics and some of the epics. This isn't going to make too huge a difference, but um, it is a buff nonetheless. Where do you think they will place the next kingdom? I have no clue. The map is already so congested. I wouldn't even be surprised if they actually expand out the map. Graphically. So that it extends a bit farther. Because the map's getting pretty crowded. They haven't reworked the map in about three years. Though it is, uh, isn't unprecedented. They have completely reworked the map before. Well, not completely. The, uh, the geography was kind of the same. But how it visually looked was drastically changed. But they have reworked the map before. The map didn't always used to look like it did right now. Anyone who's been playing the game for a while knows what it looks like before. Like, the layout of it and everything's still the same as before. But graphically, it is drastically different than it was before. Alright, and we upgrade four more mechs, because there's no way I'm going to upgrade all the epic ones. We did upgrade one epic one, though, because we needed it for the, um, for the, um, uh, what's it called? 
the uh, faction event when we were trying to do pure faction for the place. So we did use that back then. That was a really annoying pure faction. Because I don't want to upgrade all the epics. Because uh, epics are still precious enough that you generally only want to upgrade good troops with them. As far as ultra rare and below, we could upgrade literally whatever and it doesn't really matter. I'm surprised we haven't actually upgraded um, um, Goblin Rocket. Goblin Rocket actually gains a pretty decent benefit from being upgraded. It gains a mix of stats plus four magic for its uh, extra turn cast. That's actually pretty good. That is a pretty substantial benefit given what the troop does. It's actually six total damage because it hits a uh, uh, light splash on the adjacents, which is 25%. And then uh, the four extra on obviously whatever it targets, which comes out to um, 411 for extra damage. So that's a total, of course, of uh, six. So even though he doesn't gain six magic, he does gain six damage from being maxed, technically. Okay, another one down. Next, uh, these last three. And then whatever else we want to upgrade. Oh, does that gain six magic? Nice. Well, I guess it makes sense. It's one of those foia -E kind of spammer guys. They generally gain magic if they hit all enemies. Pretty much almost anything that hits all enemies simultaneously gains magic as, um, six magic as their thing. There are a few exceptions to it, but, uh, for the most part, that's how they are. Yep, now we'll be nice and upgraded for when the new Mythic comes out next week. And we do it with this weapon. And whenever we get a summon, they'll have extra stats. It's not a huge difference, but it'll make an impact. Also, we definitely won't need to worry about Adana not being meddled far enough. Gosh. <laughs> so many medals. We're going to need to do some farming this stream just to make up for all this. <laughs> After we just burnt through this many metals. What is that bonus? Oh yeah, that's the 666 bonus. Right? Oh no, no, this is a different one. What is that bonus? Warlock? Interesting. What even counts as Warlock? Also, kind of funny that a cannon is considered a Warlock, typing-wise. <laughs> Seems kind of weird. <laughs> the cannon warlock. Who says a cannon can't be a warlock? Mechs have dreams too. <laughs> he wants to be a real warlock. <laughs> but there we go. Okay, now let's go uh, upgrade a bunch of junk. Just randomly. Well, not random randomly, but uh, I'm looking for troop type, and I'm looking for order based on uh, rarity, base rarity. Okay, to the commons! Okay, let's figure out what commons we want to go upgrade. What's still not completely dead tier common that potentially gets summoned off of something? This thing, theoretically, however, I hate it compared to the other ones. I forget what summons it. I think something does. Cannon is a construct, not a mech. I was like, wait, we forgot a mech. It's like, nope, it's a construct. Silver Draken is summoned off of Christine X. Even though Christine X hasn't been meta for forever. <laughs> it is still a summon troop. Also, anything that randomly summons Dragon also summons, uh, summons it. Okay, next. Um, Sloth, potentially. I feel like I never use Sloth, and I barely anything summons it other than random daemon. Rockworm. There's only durability, though, for Rockworm. Serpent ever so occasionally gets used, but there's normally better red craters out there. Quasit gets summoned from several things, so I'm actually going to upgrade Quasit. It's not a good troop, but it gets summoned by several different methods. So might as well give it extra stats for when it does happen. I 
Okay, next. Uh, let's see. Pride Hunter is not horrifically bad. Oh, we gotta upgrade the peasant. <laughs> does anything summon peasant? I don't think it does. We haven't upgraded loyalty. I don't feel like I really use it. The biggest issue with it is a lot of things that have HP boost ratio also use green. There are a few that don't though, like Bull Taurus. But there's normally better options out there than going her. However, she's not a horrible option to consider. Yeah, we're starting to run out of good, um... Starting to run out of good, um... Actually, I'll upgrade this guy. Good comments to upgrade. Which kind of makes sense. We almost have all the comments maxed at this point. Not like all, all of them, but uh, we're getting pretty close. We can upgrade the Dwarf for Dwarf Summon. Because whenever you run a Dwarf team, um, a High Forge can summon it. Arctic Fox, what do you do again? Yeah, you're useless. However, Beast Summon is a thing. No, nothing particularly viable does it. We're actually surprisingly close to having all the commons maxed. We might need to do a head count. Because we are pretty close. Right, at this point, let's just do the summoners. Everything that gets summoned off of something. Which is almost everything in the game <laughs> at this point. <laughs> but at least the ones that are slightly more meta. This thing can get summoned off a of high forge whenever you run a dwarf team. Uh, there are some things that summon Fortress Gate. We already upgraded the Elf because the Elf summoned. Is there a Morfolk summon in the game? I'm not even sure. I cannot remember. Let me go upgrade Loyalty. Loyalty is not horrible. It's not particularly, like, used in the current state of the game anymore. It's not horrible. There's just better HP options, especially with, um, especially since what's-his-name came into the game. Um, I forget his name because I don't personally use him that often. But he's a much better HP accumulator. The, that one Mythic, that's like the, um, Trolls. Why can I not remember his name? He's like 25 mana cost or so. Infinite really creates mana and HP. Why can I not remember his name? Uh, uh, oh, Sakurax. But yeah, ever since Sakurax came into the game, loyalty is kind of like completely dead. <laughs> There's almost no instance you would use loyalty instead of Sakurax. Very, very situational on if you would use her instead. Okay, uh, comments, comments, comments. Let's go upgrade the loot. <laughs> Gotta go max the coin purse. Uh, let's see. Theoretically, something does summon this, even though you would never actually use that troop in the current state of the game for the most part. Still go upgrade it. And I think we can do one more realistically until we should probably stop upgrading stuff. Theoretically, we could do two. But in case a good common comes out of nowhere, which is very unlikely, but not impossible. I guess I should get Ice Worm upgraded. Did I not do Rock Worm yet? We should start getting the Worms upgraded. Rock Worm, Ice Worm, and um, that green one. That isn't actually one of the Worms, but it still kind of functions like one. Where's Rock Worm? But yeah, let's start upgrading the Worms next. They're not really that meta in the current state of the game, but um, they're not horrible. All right, I can realistically upgrade one more, and then we should probably stop. Let's go get Ice Worm next, I guess. Because the green version of it's kind of weird. It's not even a worm, but it does kind of what it, they do. I'm actually surprised they haven't added one for every color yet. 
Uh, technically, brown and um, blue are the only ones. However, theoretically, there's a green version, but it functions a bit differently than how the rock worms or how the worms do exactly. It's also not a worm, even though it has this similar mechanic. All I get is durability, but oh well. Better than nothing. Okay, I think we're done upgrading for now, unless we want to go upgrade a bunch of epics. I can't think of any epics offhand. I, I feel like we should just go through our, like, uh, Guild War teams if we're going to upgrade epics or something. Dude, based on that. Actually, let's do that then. Let's go through every single thing I currently have set for Guild War Defense. Or actually, let's check the offense first. Uh, Scurvy Seed, I'll go your max. No, interesting. Nor Drowned Sailor. Honestly, all those empowers I should almost start maxing. And just start maxing every uh, empower option in the game. You know what? I think we're going to go do that. Let's do that. Let's go to troops. Base rarity. Down to epic. Type the word empower. And pretty much everything that shows up we start maxing. Not literally everything, but uh, whatever the most viable ones here are. Alright, so next one, Daughter Vice. Daughter Vice is used for quite a few things. It's only durability. Actually, most of these are only going to be gaining durability. But it's probably still worth it. So we use an epic. Double epic, triple epic. Because obviously we don't want to use Nanu for it. Gotta save those Nanus. We're not going to be able to upgrade that many of them, though. Oh, so we started with, like, 7 million souls. I wonder what our souls is at. I haven't even been keeping an eye on it. <laughs> we burnt through over a million souls this stream. We're going to burn through, like, 1.4 million by the end of this. Or definitely 1.3 million. Gosh, that's a lot of souls burned through. Gimlet's not used as much, but I do like using him. Trying to see what other really big empowers we haven't done. I feel like Graveseer is the next one we should go for. We still have enough to do two or three more if we wanted to. Which I think we might. All right, what's next? Um, I think we go for Gimlet next. I almost kind of want to do the two Skull ones, but I feel like they're very rarely used in the current state of the game. They have potential. But I don't feel like I use them that often. Herod of Damnation. I don't feel like he's used for anything too meta, but he, he on th in theory, can actually be really strong. He's really tanky compared to the average Empower troop as well. So he's a pretty good idea since you're probably using him in first slot. He actually gains quite a bit of a benefit from being upgraded. More so than some of these other ones, in the sense that you're normally using him as a tank anyway, so giving him more durability is pretty beneficial. Okay, realistically, we can upgrade one more without going too low. Because we have four spears here, and we have uh, eight spears here. Which means, theoretically, I can actually upgrade two more epics, but we're only going to go for one more for now. Just so we have one leeway in case a good epic comes in. Actually, I should probably stop now in case two good epics come in. Because we can get a faction and then get an event week. And simultaneously get two epics we need a max. So we're actually going to stop there for now. I think that's fine for now. Alright, there we go. And we burned through uh, 1.4 million souls. Maybe a little bit higher. Gosh. See, uh, we don't have infinite souls. It can go down pretty quick. Once you start getting stuff meddled, that number goes down drastically. To upgrade every single thing in the game, you need like, um... Gosh, I, I forget the math on it. It's almost 100 million souls or something. It's absurdly high. Obviously, we've already spent probably like 15, 20 million towards it. Maybe like 15, I think. And we still have 5 million, but uh, you still need a lot more. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let me go hand out a code. I said after we're done upgrading... We'd go do that. So let me go hand out a code. 
And then uh, I kind of want to do a head count on how many gold medals we have. Then we'll probably just farm a little bit of tokens to kind of make up for the fact that we just burnt through so many. Uh, hold up. I forgot. I don't have it in the thingy yet. I just need to go do that. I still have it in the Discord. You know what? I'm going to go do that right now. We're going to go copy-paste all the uh, codes into our uh, sheet. Our wondrous notepad of codes. I still haven't updated it yet with the new codes. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, let's go upgrade. Uh, I mean, uh, let me go get code, I mean. We already finished upgrading. Okay, uh, let me go grab all the codes up to the point of where we're using. Copy every last one of them. Put it all in here. Uh, move it back. Cut out this one because this is the one we're handing out right now. Click save so we have a nice notepad so we don't always have to use Discord. Uh, da, da, da. Put this over here. Put this over here. Put that over there. Put that over there. Put that over there. Put that over there. Click refresh. Put this over here. Paste it. Copy it. And give it to you guys. There you guys go. There's the redeem code used on gemsaware.com. If the game code section, your invite code can be found in your settings menu. Whatever your game says right over there is what you put in for your invite code. Redeem code is right over there in... Um, in uh, chat, just copy paste all the random uh, numbers and letters, starting with AGK, and give same reward as always uh, two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Enjoy, everyone. There you go. Okay, so let's go do a head count real quick on how many gold uh, medals we have relative to how many troops there are. Uh, the easiest way to do this is go to elite level and count them by eights. Uh, one, two, three. Wait, what? Oh, I still have it by. Um... Oh, I, I gotta click single click. Uh, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 times 8. Math. Calculator. I'm just going to put calculator. I'm pretty sure I could do that in my head. but um, Wait, did I say 16 or 70? 17 times 8. 17 times 8 plus 4. Uh, we have 140 uh, elite levels. That means we have 140 out of... Um, out of uh, 100 or 925. So that means we are basically, based on the rate at which they come into the game, we're we're like barely 10%, like slightly above 10%. But realistically, we're actually pretty much at 10% due to the fact that uh, troops come in way quicker than the rate at which you can upgrade them. Unless you farm tokens like really, really high amounts. Because to be able to upgrade troops at the rate at which they come into the game... You would have to get math. You would have to get um, 54 Nisha tokens per month. Oh, actually, more than that because you get Mythics, uh, the Doom things as well. You would have to get around 70 Nisha tokens per month, which means you'd basically have to get two Nisha, at minimum, two to three Nisha tokens per day to keep up with the rate of maxing everything in the game due to how many Mythics come into the game. They would at minimum have to get minimum minimum two niches per day to um to keep up with it. And based on RNG, you could literally farm all day, like literally 24 hours, and still somehow not get two niches. It'd be very unlikely in that time that you wouldn't get two niches, but it's theoretically possible that you could go 24 hours without getting two niches. And you would have to do that every single day to keep up with the rate that's currently within the game if you wanted to max literally everything, including Mythics. The mythics are by far the hardest thing to max. Counting everything else, it's not as bad. Like, keeping up with, like, trying to keep up, like, ultra rare and below max is doable. But legends and mythics in particular are exceedingly hard to uh, max. Epics are a bit too, but, um, they're not as bad due to war lore event constantly every single week. Anyways, uh, most of our streamers go do a little bit of farming to make up for the fact that we just burnt through hundreds upon hundreds of tokens. So we'll just do a little grind. So if anyone has any other questions, now would be a good time to ask. And since we unfortunately can't stream the dragon game, I'm probably going to go uh, check some streams out, see what it's like. I haven't even looked at it yet. But I hope the game turns out well. I hate how they launched this closed beta, though. <laughs> that it was completely RNG-based. 
What's even worse is they're giving out an exclusive skin for the beta. Yeah, it's completely luck-based if you get into the beta. <laughs> Which is a very bad combination. It's already a bad sign that they already have like an RNG loot box kind of system. Just for getting into the beta and getting the skin. I wouldn't be surprised if the game has actual loot boxes. I feel like they will via dragon egg hatching. Where you'd like hatch a dragon egg and then you get like a random cosmetic. Like there's a really ridiculously high chance that's how they do some of their cosmetics. Probably not all of them. But like some number of them will likely be done that way. Which is a horrible way of doing it. <laughs> so we'll see. Obviously they didn't make money some way. Uh, let's go take that over. It looks like Pokemon Unite's going to be doing it in a way that isn't annoying, though. I think the clothing might be RNG slightly, though. But, um, as far as how the outfits look like, it looks like it's just a single-time buy thing. And whatever the price is was what the price is. We're trying to say I prefer games that are like that. Like, just a solid single price for it. No RNG related to it. And if you want the cosmetic, it costs this much. Sometimes they're absurdly overpriced, obviously. But uh, it's much better than putting it in a loot box. What is the new weapon? Is it good? Uh, yes, it is very good. And it's a, um, it's a Jar of Eyes-like weapon. It's 14 mana cost, green, blue, which is literally what Jar of Eyes was before. Explodes all brown. Uh, however, its uh, main two benefits, or main few benefits, is it summons a mech troop. It gives a random stats effect to all mechs, which if you're using a pure mech team or a pretty heavy mech team is pretty substantial. And it also, um, it also gets four mana back. Which makes it really easy to loop its mana back. Because not only do you have a double color exploding a bunch of the board. But you also gain 4 of the 10 mana back that it needs. So basically you start with needing 7 mana. And then every subsequent cast requires uh, uh, only 10 mana. Because you will guarantee you get 4 of the mana back. And obviously you'll probably get even more than 4 of the mana back. Because of the, um, the uh, mana accumulated via the uh, explosions of course. Yeah, I'm sure not, still not sure if I'm buying cosmetics in Pokemon Unite. Because I have no character, uh, no clue what character I'm going to main. And if they do a battle pass, I generally just like wearing whatever the battle pass stuff is. One rare exception to that has been Fall Guys, where I buy like nearly literally every single uh, cosmetic they ever release. But it's mostly because they have such a generous free amount of cosmetics. Because, like, 95% of the cosmetics in the game are literally just purely free. Because they just cost in-game resources, which is basically free <laughs> with how the game is set up. Uh, let's see, I'll take that over. Because it's very much set up like how gems are in Gems of War. Where theoretically you could buy them, but the game gives such a ridiculous, generous amount of them. I love when this team works perfectly. I wish it did that every battle. Could you imagine how quick this would actually be if it did it consistently? You could get an entire set done in like a minute, 30 seconds. I think world records around that pacing too. However, I think even world record for it isn't flawless. 
Because the chance of you getting an absolute pure flawless in, uh, is near impossible. You would definitely need to be using the Skylar version to get uh, the flawless, though. But it's slower per hour to use the uh, Skylar version. But its max speed is quicker. The problem with the Skyla version is your hero dies way too quick. It already dies too quick. <laughs> Under Skyla, it's even more of an issue. But the perfect for this would, of course, be you instantly cast Leprechaun. It feeds full mana to Zugoth. You then auto win with Zugoth. Like, that's what Flawless would be. You cast Zugoth, you get triple Cascade of Skull, and then you auto win. And then you would do that six times in a row. That's what a Flawless um, Explorer would look like. However, I don't think it has ever been recorded. Because the chance of it happening in a row is exceedingly unlikely. And even that wasn't a flawless. It was near flawless in that it um, had everything it needed in one cast. But we still had to swipe for it. It didn't manually cascade it for us. So even that wasn't a flawless uh, battle there. One mana short. Why you gotta do that to us? I know, we lost our hero already. Gosh, we just started the battle. Are we already losing our hero? Oh gosh, we're losing everything. Zugoth, carry us. Oh, so you know what game I almost felt like playing the other day? Puzzle Quest 2. <laughs> The Puzzle Quest 3 hype has made me want to play Puzzle Quest 2 again. My only concern with Puzzle Quest 2 is the difficulty for it's rather easy. Puzzle Quest 1 was actually more challenging. Puzzle Quest 2 on hardest difficulty is actually still relatively easy. There's only like two really hard fights. The Dragon Boss and uh, the Final Boss. And even that wasn't even too bad. <laughs> Isabel. <laughs> if you want to pluck, you can pluck. But if you don't feel up to it, you don't have to pluck. Yeah, it is flower day. Uh, let's see. Also, at this rate, I'm going to have, like, max cash stack in um, Animal Crossing at some point. Because I keep not spending any of the resources, and I keep accumulating them all. <laughs> I tend to hoard resources in a lot of games. Especially any that have an inventory system. One nice thing about Gems of War is I never need to worry about that too much. Because the inventory system is infinite in this game. But games that have a limited um, inventory space, I am kind of bad with. <laughs> because I hoard literally everything. Especially limited time stuff. Which Animal Crossing is completely filled with. Uh, let's see if I take that over. Oh, 
Well, at least we got to make back some of our tokens this stream. Obviously not that many. <laughs> but we made some progress. I think we'll go for this final chest and probably call it a wrap. Because tonight we're literally just going to be doing more of the same thing. Just grinding. And then tomorrow night we'll probably do a little bit of invasions if the guild hasn't already gotten it done. Which I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be yet. Well, we might be. And then go on more token grinding. Because after today it's going to take a while to replenish those tokens. But at least once the, uh, the new mech comes out next week we'll have uh, pretty much every low rarity mech in the entire game maxed. Which will be very beneficial for that weapon. Of course, a little bit of extra stats that you get from elite levels isn't going to like make or break many battles. But uh, it's nice to have. Slightly more stats better than not more stats. Very few people have a lot of this stuff upgraded too. Like, I, I very rarely in Guild Wars ever see people with... Oh, nice, and Nanu. With upgraded uh, gold medals. It does happen. But I feel like it's pretty rare. Anyways, guys, I'm going to be heading out for now. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Uh, we'll be back tonight, same time as always, 8 p.m. Eastern time, which at this point is six hours from now. Uh, and we'll be uh, mostly just messing around with probably a little bit more grinding. We'll have another code, though. So for a little bit of resources there. And probably just discussing stuff. We'll probably go over the mech stuff a little bit again as well, mess with it for a little bit. Since uh, the new mech weapon, uh, definitely make sure to get it. Uh, it's 210 gems in the um, in the invasion shop, 100%. You want to make sure to go get it before the uh, end of this weekend. Uh, as it will be a very long time before you can get it again, and it synergizes really well with next Friday's uh, Mythic. And there's plenty of teams that you can do that don't even need next Friday's Mythic as well. You could literally just run it with three bomb bots and it's good to go, which is a common troop that pretty much everyone has three of. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty nice weapon. Make sure you go get it. Anyways, guys, we'll catch you later. Have a wonderful weekend, and uh, 